social marketing and success strategies through speaking events, webinars, workshops, and we're very fortunate to have him here this morning. So let's welcome Alan up to the podium to share a few words of wisdom for us. Alan. taken part in your first crowdsourcing exercise. <laughs> and if you want to little, learn a little bit more about what crowdsourcing is, we will actually find out. Um, crowdsourcing, if you're not familiar with the concept, um, you actually may be more familiar with it than you think. Um, in fact, one version of it has been reported greatly in the news recently. Um, this is from New Hampshire Business Review where they talk about the crowdfunding bill that's now working its way through Congress. Um, Senator Kelly Ayotte is one of the co-sponsors of the bill that's working through the Senate, and I see we have Susan from Kelly's office. Thank you very much. Um, this is a, a bill that will encourage people to invest in small businesses, businesses that have normally not been able to attract um, typical types of investor capital, whether it's SEC funding, um, angel investors, um, private investors, that sort of thing, because they are the smallest of small businesses. Um, variations on the House versus the Senate bill will allow either a million or two million in funding in chunks of the $10,000. <coughs> so this is a really revolutionary concept for bootstrapping businesses it's great to know about for the state of New Hampshire. So we're going to talk about um, these kinds of opportunities that are happening right now. But first, uh, let's talk about what crowdsourcing <coughs> is. <laughs> James Howe, who wrote the book on crowdsourcing um, and coined the term, calls this his white paper definition of crowdsourcing. Uh, for our purposes, we can talk about this kind of crowdsourcing. Um, it's, we can make it a lot simpler because even in the crowdsourcing community, people argue about what crowdsourcing really is. Uh, for example, when you talk about, say, open source software like WordPress, is that really crowdsourced? Has a crowd actually worked on it? Some people say yes because thousands of software coders from all over the world contribute to the, um, to the development of WordPress. And yet, it was also developed by a core team of engineers originally. So technically speaking, when it was developed, it was not crowdsourced. It's now been handed over to a community to crowdsource its improvement. For our purposes, we're going to talk about three very simple things that were um, outlined by Eliza Sherman in her book, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Crowdsourcing. The three elements of the three types of crowdsourcing are work, input, and action. And we'll go over what that actually means and actually ground it with some examples here. Work is a process of effort, something that you actually employ somebody to do, generally speaking, but in this case, you're actually having a crowd or a community do it through an open call. Um, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. This is a highly secretive think tank for military government development. Not exactly an organization that you would suspect to employ crowdsourcing ideas, right? Actually allowing the general public to help develop the things that it does. Well, they've actually found that they need to innovate and they need the help of people outside their organization to do it. One of the ways they did it was to modify a naval warfare game called Dangerous Waters. And they added in some naval data into it. And what they wanted to do was try to create a better, I have to ACTUV, this is anti-submarine continuous trail unmanned vessel. Oof. Speaking of acronyms, Chris. Um, basically, they have an automated device like a Predator drone that trails enemy submarines. But they needed to figure out how to do it better. 
So they put a free version of this Dangerous Waters game on their website, downloaded 50,000 times in 2011 by people all over the world. And they also had a uh, naval officer experienced in anti-submarine warfare playing the same game. They tracked it with five leaderboards. The experienced naval officer never placed higher than third and typically placed fifth or sixth on this challenge. They actually found brand new ways to actually track um, submarines more efficiently as a result of this crowdsourced idea. Here in New Hampshire, um, and this touches on something that we've already talked about today with um, the technical expertise that's available in the state, Jitter Jam, which was in the news earlier this year because um, this startup company that were founded here in New Hampshire in 2008, recently bought by the Meltwater Group, a global corporation, uh, for $7 million in early 2011. <laughs> when they were doing some of their programming to get their product to the place where their exit strategy was to sell, and now they're actually working as part of Meltwater, um, they needed programmers and could not get it here in New Hampshire, so they put the call out on Twitter and said, we need help programming for our product. They actually hired people through Twitter to get their product to the point where it was actually an attractive buy for the Meltwater Group. And that is crowdsourcing your employment base. Now, this has particular relevance for organizations like, say, Stay, Work, Play. And I told you, Kate, I was going to have you in. You're actually in my presentations, I think, more often than my wife, which is, uh, I don't really know what to make of that. Um, I have a, uh, But this has particular relevance because when you find out that there are high-tech companies and there are awesome um, manufacturing and computer companies like Dyn, for example, um, or Jitter Jam in the state of New Hampshire, um, it becomes important for organizations like Stay Work Play to show the younger, um, the younger generation coming up that there are opportunities here within the state, um, not only for companies like that, but also to become lifestyle entrepreneurs, to actually um, have their services uh, be employed by companies all over the world and actually have the revenue come into New Hampshire where they can create their own wonderful quality of life with Four Seasons to recreate the lowest um, tax burden in the nation and all the statistics that um, Scott was citing for us earlier um, in the day. So, second element is input, which is basically asking for feedback. Um, if you've seen uh, questions and answers on LinkedIn, or the questions feature and the polling features that Facebook now offers, for example, or Quora, if any of you are familiar with it, that questions and answers say Yahoo Answers, Google Answers. This is the kind of thing that's called crowdsourced input. It's getting information from the general public. Um, on a global perspective, one way this has happened is with a company called um, Innocentive, which is basically a, um, a challenge-oriented site where global corporations post the thorniest issues that their research and development departments are trying to deal with and haven't found solutions for yet. And they post these challenges and actually reward monetarily people, $50,000 for example, in fact. Um, biomarkers for plasma integrity, so a, a high-tech pharmaceutical situation, which um, I know that we have opportunities to do stuff like that in New Hampshire. $50,000 to figure that out. Peelable seal for food packaging. $20,000 to help develop the technology for something like this. These are the kind of opportunities that they're putting out there for, um, for hobbyists and for people who say maybe they've been looking at it from a biological perspective, but it actually requires a physics or a chemistry perspective. This is a way to reach out to different types of people with different expertise and actually help cut down the cost of internal research and development. Here in New Hampshire, We've actually done something like this, um, not with the uh, giant monetary rewards, of course, um, but we have created a space for crowdsourcing expert information, and that's called My Expert Net. Um, and Deb was here. I know we have Deb Osgood from the Knowledge Institute in the audience, and she was a big part of that, along with Public Service in New Hampshire and uh, the Division of Economic Development and a couple other organizations. Uh, we have 24, or excuse me, 26 different areas of business on this site, 65 registered experts who are available to answer questions of all stripes from anyone in the New Hampshire business community. It's a free of charge crowdsourced expert information resource. Um, another one from the economic development perspective is Visualize Nashua. Do I have any folks from uh, Nashua in here? No. Well, Susan, hi. <laughs> So, 
the city of Nashua uh, decided to work with um, Renaissance Downtown to help um, development in the Bridge Street area. And one of the things that they decided to do was actually involve the community in the development opportunity. So they started this website, which is visualizenashua.com, and they had people vote on different opportunities to create development within that um, downtown area. Um, and it was, let's see, uh, 50 likes for Bridge Street Retail. Any suggestions for retail development inside the Bridge Street area? Um, if the community votes on it and 50 people actually like the idea, then the Renaissance folks will do feasibility studies to see whether that is actually a good thing to develop. And they're including that in part of their whole plan. Um, 100 likes for either downtown retail or Bridge Street public amenities. 200 for any downtown public amenity that they will do feasibility studies for. And this is a, an artist concept of a rear front block that currently has um, 40 likes, I believe, right now for the Bridge Street area that people are actually getting to vote on and see if this is what the future of Nashua could look like. The whole community can be involved in what the development of Nashua uh, becomes. Uh, the last element that we're going to talk about with crowdsourcing is action. Actually getting people to do something, um, particularly with their wallet. Um, and Corey mentioned uh, his campaign, the DNS is Sexy campaign. That is crowdsourced marketing. Taking those 5,000 t-shirts and sending it out to their best customers and suddenly everybody's wearing them at conferences. Everybody's posting pictures of themselves in social media channels wearing these t-shirts. That's suddenly a crowdsourced lead generation marketing campaign. Great, uh, a great idea from them. Um, Kiva is, um, is microfinance, which is basically small loans, $25. It is crowdfunding on a global scale because um, the loans that are asked for are usually in the hundreds of dollars, but it takes, say, 8, 10, 12 loans to get there. Um, and where Kiva's at right now, they have 648,000 lenders to the small businesses, mostly in third world nations. Um, since 2005, it's $263 million in loans with, uh, and this is for the uh, bankers in the house, a 98.93% repayment rate. Uh, the gentleman who came up with the idea of microfinance, Mohammed Yunus, uh, is a Nobel Peace Prize winner as a result of this. Um, it's a, a fantastic idea that crowdsourced the, the manner of giving, but in a way that actually enriches the communities. We had a local example right here in the house. And Jim Turk, and let's have a hand for Jim. So the deal with Jim, and sorry I didn't warn you about this in advance. Um, Jim used to work in a printing company, uh, but his desire and dream, and obviously he's very talented at it, is to be a musician, support himself with his music. So in 2010, he decided that it was time to make it happen. And he used a social platform called Kickstarter to fund his first tour. He actually went out on tour and raised enough money to tour the Eastern Seaboard. I made it to Nashville and back. Yeah. <laughs> um, just with, and just by raising funds through this platform. This is the kind of platform that's designed more for the artistic community, if you will, but it is the kind of situation that the crowdfunding bill is going to uh, enable business and entrepreneurship to happen more and more. Although, really, you are an entrepreneur in your own right. And he is now supporting himself as a full-time musician. He has uh, left the printing company, and he is now, um, he's now making it real. So Woohoo! Another example of crowdsourcing is the Bob Awards. Um, 80 different categories, thousands of votes that come in every year for the nominated businesses. This is another example of something that, honestly, as much as crowdsourcing, and I asked a few people, well, you know, what do you know about crowdsourcing? And a lot of the answers I got were, mm, I'm not sure. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're living with a lot of this every day. And that's really the point that I kind of want to um, leave you with more than anything else. Um, don't look for us in the Bob Awards, by the way. Our business kind of defies categorization. Um, so just to um, wrap it up a little bit, some of the benefits, um, you get access to a broader idea base because of, of the people that you engage with that are beyond the scope of what you do on a daily, you know, on a daily business day. Yeah, daily business day, that's right. That's what I meant to say. 
Um, rapid innovation, you can actually do things a little bit faster than when it's stuck inside your own business. Uh, lower costs, um, because those ideas are coming at you, you're not having to invest your own capital and your own time and, uh, and, um, and resources into it. Um, lower risk from both an employment perspective, because you're not actually have to hire new employees to do um, some of this work. Usually the overhead is lower, but also there is a cost involved generally with pursuing new projects. Um, and when they don't work out, it's kind of a, you know, it's part of the, uh, the red ink on the bottom line. So, um, but there are issues that come up too that are worth keeping in mind. One of them is commoditization. And in the crowdsourcing world, um, where that has shown up particularly is in the photography industry, where now because of uh, photo and video quality being so tremendous, um, any amateur photographer can create wonderfully vivid um, stock photography, and that has um, tremendously decreased the <coughs> amount of money that people can make from it. So it is an issue. Um, moderation, when you start involving a community in what you do, you actually have to start to manage that community a little bit more and it takes a little bit more out of your time and where you direct your resources. Um, in terms of work, like what are the, um, you know, what are the, um, what are the agreements um, you're gonna have for whether it's licensing ideas, what rights are you going to retain or what rights are the uh, contractors going to retain, those things you have to keep in mind. Um, also sorting it out. Um, when you ask the community for ideas, unfortunately, a lot of the ideas you get are, are not going to be the best. But you have to, so you have to get used to having a process to find um, how you know, to find the cream and make sure that it rises to the top more quickly. And also competition, because when you start uh, making it public what things you're interested in and what you want to develop, then your competition can start paying attention to this and get ideas in their own. So just to wrap up. Uh, Crowdsourcing involves asking a community for their input, for their work, or to do action for you. Um, there are possibilities in every business function. Intuit, for example, um, the crowdsources their customer service and support. Um, Barbie Collector, um, doll, adult doll collectors, their um, fan club forums are, are member moderated, for example. Quirky is a website that allows people to vote on new inventions. Threadless lets people, uh, lets the community vote on t-shirts that are going to be sold. Um, any type of business function can do it, um, even ones that you wouldn't expect. There's a company called Local Motors in Massachusetts that lets you, uh, that crowdsources the design and build of your car. Street legal cars. Um, and uh, just when you, when you go to start doing this, just be wary of the, of the issues that can apply. Just take your time and lead your businesses and your clients into it. Um, make sure that you go in with eyes wide open and test it. Um, see how it goes. Test it on small things and work through it. Um, but we're going to actually do one other crowdsourcing thing. I'm going to ask you to do one more crowdsourcing thing right now. Um, I'm going to ask you right now, but you don't have to do it right now. Um, this is where you can get a hold of us, and we have a Facebook page at facebook.com slash aha yourself. Right now, the post on there, um, and thank you, Scott, for asking this question in one of the panels earlier, is um, best piece of business advice or inspiration um, that you've ever gotten. Um, that's the top post on our Facebook page right now, and whether it's today, tomorrow, sometime this week, we'd all invite you over to our Facebook page, and please share that um, best piece of advice or wisdom that you have. It's a way of um, crowdsourcing your knowledge and information. And I appreciate the time that you've taken to come here and uh, listen to everybody and also to me. So thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. We're going to wrap up.